against the World Cup, Dave. Oh, my God. Well, look at it beautifully. We're here in Brazil, Will. Look at this. Look at the view. It's gorgeous. Uh, it's gorgeous. The whole of Brazil looks like this after that <laughs> dominant performance. Yeah. Who knew that was going to happen? 3-1. I'll tell you who knew it was going to happen. The cupcakes, Rog. The World Cupcakes. Yeah. If you haven't seen it already, go to ESPNFC.com. You've got to click around a bit. You've got to go under blogs. You've got to look for Men in Blazers. You can watch our preview that we recorded in New York before we left by Ocean Liner. Yeah, we didn't actually need to come. Because we bit into the cupcakes, the and World it, it Cupcake, is it and is they known. both told us the Brazil one said 3-1. Yep. The Croatian one told us that Croatia would score first. You know what? I, I had a taste of own goal, but I didn't say it. Yeah, but it said that off. Croatia would score first off. and that Brazil would come back and cupcakes do it. Cupcakes do not lie. The science... There's religion and there's cupcakes. Nate there is. Silver, we know you're watching st this statistic stuff. You don't you need do it. No. You don't need it. Waste you just need time. world cupcakes. Anyway, so uh, stay tuned for us. Uh, you know, tomorrow morning, we've got Spain versus Holland going up. Uh, spoiler alert, if you don't want to know the result of that game, don't watch it because yeah, we're going to have it, it every single time. But anyway, Dave, we're here. It's the Copa das Copas. Yeah, it is the Copa das Copas. It is the Copa das Copas. We are here in Rio. Yeah. Here in, I, I have to tell you, we arrived this morning on a flight to arrive at this airport to go to customs surrounded by well, crazy Mexican, Argentinian, yeah. uh, Croatian fans pouring yeah. through customs. It was a nipple tingler day. It really was. It has, it's been a nipple tingler all day. Once in a lifetime to know that you are going to yeah. be in Brazil yeah. when the World Cup starts in this country. It's been an honour, David. No, it is. It's been amazing so far. Uh, Rog, we had all these warnings. The airport was going to be closed. It was going to be on strike. I have never got through <laughs> customs and immigration quicker in my entire life. The traffic wasn't that bad. Yep. The hotel's nice. We've got Eduardo, Renata, yep. our friends at the hotel now. Ro Robinho, who used to play for Manchester City, is now a bellboy in our hotel. <laughs> it's football is everywhere in this country. And all yeah. I'll tell you is that I've been delirious all day, mm -hmm. not just because we knew this game yep. was going to kick off, which we did. Yep. The World Cup was about to start. Yep. We've waited four years for this. We've waited for longer. A thousand one hundred forty-seven days since Spain yeah. uh, kicked off the British Netherlands. We've been counting down every single day. Uh -huh. Then we arrive in Rio, and to my joy and delight, we learn, Davo. Yeah. There's a beach here named after a Barry Manilow song. Mandy. Yeah, Mandy. <laughs> yeah, Copa Cabana. Cabana. They love Barry Manilow. So they much. do. They love football. And they love Barry Manilow, Dave. Yeah. And they've named the whole beach area after him. I just it just warmed wore my cockles. See, I've never been to Brazil, Rog. You've been here before. I've never yep. been here before. Yeah. Um, obviously, therefore, have never been to Rio. And I've sort of seen pictures of the beach. I didn't think it was going to be very nice. Well, you just thought it was going to be like the lyrics of the Duran Duran song. Yeah, well, I love, I love that song, too. Everyone is so friendly here. That's what yeah. we want to say. Everyone is so friendly. Since we arrived, everybody wants to play three-card Monty. With us, <laughs> don't they? But it's also physically beautiful. It really is physically beautiful, Rog. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the beach is so gorgeous and the people are all so beautiful. The favelas, Rog, they sort of tumble down the mountain towards the beach and they're terrifying. But they're also quite beautiful. There's yep. something beautiful about them at the same time. Helicopters flying through the sky everywhere. Occasional gunshot in the distance, maybe. A lot. I watch Lone Survivor on the plane over here. And honestly, <laughs> sitting here in Rio, film. having a coffee in our hotel, it was very, yeah. there's more gunshots per afternoon yeah. in Rio than there are in the whole 127 minutes of Lone Survivor. We also watched a football game. Yeah, that's, we should get to the game. Your tweets have poured in. Yeah. At Men in Blazers, give us a tweet with your thoughts on this game. Yeah. I mean, what a game. What a game. And probably... Um, Probably the best player was the uh, was y Yuichi Nishimura, man of the match. For <laughs> yeah, us. I know. Well, FIFA, we're not saying that FIFA fixed the World Cup. We no, would be the last no, no, people no. in the world we'd to suggest. We would never say it. Never say it. But referee, <laughs> narrative-wise, had a great game. He did. Really, Saw really the game great close game. Up so differently. Anyway, we're going to get to the football. We're going to talk about the football first of all. We should talk a little bit about the opening ceremony. <sighs> I mean, to know at Men in Blazers, tweet us if you understood. What the hell was going on in that opening ceremony? Because I've watched a lot in my time, Dave. I have yeah. watched a lot of Polish underground filmmaking of the 1970s era. Yeah. With a lot of subtext. A lot of statements buried within the wheels within wheels. Yeah. I watched that opening ceremony, <laughs> evidently directed from the grave posthumously by Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah, it was amazing stuff. Graham Parker, who a fellow Grantlander, Guardian US columnist, wrote, it was the visual reenactment of Seth Blatter's logic, and it was flawless. 
Uh, he also wrote, in fact, may not in fact be an opening <laughs> ceremony, but crowd trouble at the Interplanetary Cup. Parts of it did look like that. Oh, it did, but then it gave way to Pitbull, and we thought we were excited <laughs> about the World Cup. I mean, it was the greatest. Not sure that J-Lo was singing live no, at that point. Not. Probably not, but he um, didn't mind. It was like there was walking trees behind him. Yeah. There was just very morose kind of Brazilians yeah. in tights, very cheap outfits because they've given yeah. all the money to Pitbull and J-Lo. Yeah. Brazil gets shafted again. And um, he just looked in this kind of like psychedelic orgy that was going on all around yeah. him. He had the face on him, tucked in shirt like Vincent Tan. He had a face on him just like, this is just a normal Thursday afternoon for Pitbull. <laughs> He's a confident man. He wears a very short pair of trousers, Rog. Just, you know, I think Jennifer Lopez threw him right under the pants bus with did. those ones. How are your cuffs, by the way? They're looking gone, good. I've, I've gone 32 inches for the World Cup. <laughs> the tape is very good. I love it. I'll just say about Pitbull in Liverpool, yeah. when you wear your pants like that above your shoes, yeah. you, you, there's a phrase for that. You say, your pants have had an argument with your shoes. Uh -huh. I think Pitbull's pants had had an argument with his shoes. But then it gave way. It gave way to something even better. We thought oh. the World Cup, we thought we'd just seen the finest moment of the World Cup. Thank you, Pitbull. Then the national anthem. Better singing. David Luiz singing the Brazilian national anthem is just something to behold. I mean, G Gigi Buffon, yeah. who you will get to see when he plays for Italy. Yeah. He looks almost shy compared to the way... I thought David Luiz was going to injure himself yeah. just singing the national anthem. It was so joyous. Yeah. But it was almost too joyous. Yeah. Too joyous. Because that game began, Davo. That game began... And you interview these Brazilian players, and I've actually spent time with David Luiz, spent time with Paulinho, I spent time with Julio Cesar over the past couple of months making uh, the movie that played on ESPN a couple of nights ago. When they talk about... Brazil and the world. When you talk mm -hmm. to English footballers about the World Cup, yeah. what do they say? Yeah, we're going to go, we're going to give it our best. Yeah. What do, I mean, and the Brazilians say they have been put on earth by God. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I was born yeah. to play before millions, bring joy to millions and yeah. bring victory to the country. But that's a lot of pressure yeah. to put yourself Although under. I've learned one thing today is that I always thought when, when the Brazilian players come out and they look up into the sky, yeah. I'm not sure they are looking at God. I think they're looking for kite surfers. Or maybe low-flying helicopters, helicopters that might hit. The, we were almost <laughs> hit by a helicopter today on the rooftop of our hotel. Yeah, the game started. Brazil, the atmosphere in the stadium seemed a little subdued, Rog. Yep. Brazil seemed a little subdued. Was it subdued or was it just nervous, apprehensive, just it's, not in the face? It's tough to know exactly. I mean, you know, a lot of corporates in there from the opening game of the World Cup. Not a lot of real football fans. You yep. kept on cutting to the yep. crowd. You're like, watch that football. Stop checking your Twitter. But seventh minute, Olich had a chance to score. Three great balls came into the box in the first 11th minute. And we were watching this Brazil team. We've seen go through this cycle yeah. where they were terrible, terrible. Mm -hmm. Brazil lost hope. They were plummeting through the FIFA rankings. FIFA rankings, who cares about them? Brazil mm -hmm. really did. They lost the Olympics also yeah. to Mexico. The country was in a national funk. And then last year's Confederations Cup was like a blaze of glory that reignited that sense of destiny. Yeah. They prepared, they prepared, they've like really worked at every minute detail, but they forgot one detail, David. Which was? What to do when a team <laughs> has the temerity to actually... I know, the they did. The, the, the gall of it to come at them with crosses into the box. Three great crosses into the box. Cocky. Third one comes in. Uh, Tiago Silva doesn't block it. Yep. It gets past everybody in the box. And uh, there he is to knock it in. Great finish from just the edge of the... Uh, from, from the, the He's been training for that box. A great tweet Marcello. we had from uh, GFOP at DSEX. Uh -huh. He said, this was classic English Premier League action. Yeah. Jelovic and Louise combining on the own goal. Uh -huh. One need to touch the score, Jelovic. Yeah. The other need to touch to clear. Both men fail. True to form, David. But what was the problem with that own goal? goal rog well, well there's one thing if you've not watched this before we yeah. only have when well, we have a couple of rules yeah don't read too much into friendlies yeah never only fools predict the outcome of the world cup three one cup yeah six. 32 inch sleeves and the biggest possibly yeah don't throw me under the cuff yeah but the biggest rule of all Dave. oh you never want to score too early never you never want to score too early a huge huge mistake. so they That's scored too early Rangers fan. yeah they scored too early and the crowd went even more silent uh rog the pitch, I felt, I know the commentators were saying the pitch looked good. The pitch was bobbling around a bit. I think Brazil were just having a problem in the final third. And uh, then the lights were going on and off. It was all, <laughs> everything was going wrong. It was kind of comical. People running in and out of the ESPN, like all the Bob Lee and, and Michael Ballack and Ruud van Nistelrooy, all running in and out. Oh, the lights have gone off. Yep. It's like, there isn't going to be a thing. A helicopter's crashed. Like, everything going on in the background. 
And uh, and then, Rog, Oscar. I would say two players, Oscar and Neymar. Oscar so tired at the end of the season at Chelsea, Rog. Was he tired? Or was he just saving was it for the World Cup and those underwear ads that are on the side of buses? As a Chelsea fan, yeah. you've watched this little Oscar. I mean, yeah. We adore Oscar. He has yeah. a face. He looks like he barely shaves. He has a voice that sounds like he's the man yeah. who sings the Champions League theme song. Yeah. Incredibly youthful. GFOP, by the way, John Green tweeted out that that's the greatest performance by an eight-year-old ever at the World <laughs> Cup by Oscar. Tactically. Yeah. Um, he's a remarkable player. And this truly the core of this Brazilian team. Mm-hmm. He can drop deep. Uh, get the ball. He can play in front of the uh, the opponent's four and try and slip that ball in. He can. I mean, today he even tackled like a hard yeah. man. And it was that. Well, he does. He's a good tackler. It yeah. was. It was that tackle. Sets it up. And Neymar. I mean, left free in midfield. So many tackles coming in, which just you know the Croatian midfield are going to look at that. They're going to be very unhappy with themselves. And he trundles it in, Rog. He trundled did it he in. Trundled it in, or did he scuff it in? Yeah. He seemed to scuff it. And you know how we say. Yeah. You know how we say. You can sometimes you can hit the ball too. Well. Oh, you can hit it too well. You never want to hit it too well. It's that, like scoring too early. That was the joy yeah. of that goal. Was he hit it too badly? Yeah, he hit it too badly. It was through the defender's legs. Goalkeeper. It's like the way that girls who are barely models are often so much better looking than girls who are actually models. I'm going to leave you there okay, in that territory. Barely a model is the ultimate girl. All I'd say. I'm <laughs> all I'd say is Petal Oscar. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> close. Petakosa. Yeah, him too. Yeah. Whatever it is. It's uh, yeah. Croatian for Joe Hart. Yeah. Little well, he'd down. made a great, by the way, he'd made a great save before from Oscar. Yeah. An acrobatic save. Because what was wrong with that Oscar shot? It, it hit, hit too well. well. It, it hit, hit way too well. well. And if you look at, there's something funny, by the way. Yeah. I'm going to say this. FIFA don't fix anything. Yeah. That's no, all. They don't. we're the last Hands people. Off, FIFA. Last Stop people to suggest. on FIFA. Leave yeah. FIFA alone. Yeah, we are team FIFA. But I think that ball was going wide until Seth Blatter got the joystick. <laughs> and just jumped, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it really it, which he's entitled to do, he is. we should say. When you can send Blatter, when you're president, you can manoeuvre the ball. Yeah, it's very true. Joystick. Neymar benefited from hitting the ball too badly. Yeah. Um, and then the game kind of turned. It didn't. Turn do you think Petacosa should have saved it? Well, if you look at it, he seemed to be covering the other post, he seemed to be favouring the other post, because he had a defender in front of him, yeah. who I think he had every right to think should have blocked that shot. Yeah. He should have blocked that shot, so he was favouring the The Chelsea defence would have been prostrate lying on the ground at that point. <laughs> they don't stand up and defend. They lie on the ground and they stop the ball. I am surprised that John Terry did not just propel himself from his home in London, where he's watching <laughs> yeah, this and just yeah. suddenly dive on in there. Yeah, and, and headlong. There's something about him It's actually very Croatian, come to think of it. Yeah. But, um, God, I, whatever you say about this goal, I'll mm-hmm. say one thing, and it is about Neymar. This yeah. is a man who played at Santos, stayed in Brazil. We wrote him off for years because he was just a YouTube player. He yeah. was full of hype. We laughed at the advert. Yeah. Put him into YouTube, his commercials. They are hilarious. Mm-hmm. Every single stripe, every single kind, he shot it in Brazil. He was making money, but we didn't think he was a real player. Yeah. We didn't believe he was a real player. He's had a very hard year in Barcelona. Yeah. The Confederations Cup affirmed something to us that he was a gentleman who could perform on the big stage. But in this first game, Davo, yeah. when Brazil did something they have not done at all in the Confederations Cup, which is go behind by a goal, whether he scuffed it, whether the goalkeeper fluffed it, it doesn't matter. Neymar stepped up and delivered when his nation needed it. I've got a lot of respect yeah, for Yeah, it's that. no doubt. Neymar and Oscar looked light years ahead of any other player on the pitch. I actually thought Luka Modric looked great as well. Uh, but yeah, Fred... Hulk, Brazil's vaunted defence, Rod, Thiago Silva, David Luiz, just all looking a little uh, a little weak. We go to half-time, Rog. Still, Croatia got to be pretty happy. 1-1, tied. We go to half-time. Wearing those outfits. Elated. <laughs> Wearing pyjamas. It's tough. It's tough to play in pyjamas, With Joseph Rog. Gordon-Levitt, dad is your manager. Yeah, it's you very, feel pretty very, good about yourself. It's very, very difficult. So, coming at half-time, they've got to feel good. The game comes out in the second half, and it's like it's not a World Cup. That wasn't even Confederations Cup football. That wasn't even friendly football. Describe why you... I mean, I felt the same. We're watching this game in ESPN headquarters. We're watching it in the green room. We have one screen which looks just like your screen at home. It's gorgeous. It has Ian Dark on it. Yeah. It has Macca on it. It is gorgeous. 
we have another screen to the right, <laughs> which frankly, we're starting to think if ABC... Oh, this is the World Cup, as far as I'm concerned. If ABC didn't do the football one, yeah. did the one, it's called the Emotional Highlight. Well, no, it's it's the EVS machine. It's the it's the sort of the digital recording device that all the guys are editing. They're shooting the crowd. They're shooting the managers. They're shooting all the stuff. And they just play slow motion highlights of the stuff that they're watching. And sometimes you'll see a few pointless stepovers or a little bit of a disgusted reaction from a player after John he's fouled. Style. But most of the time, you're seeing the managers or you're seeing the crowd. Yep. And it is captivating. It is so much better than the football. Really, football, pff, way overrated. But the crowd are amazing. And one of the things that amazed us in this second half, yep. I mean, Brazil has waited for this one. since 1950, since G Gigi has scored and Silence America. It still Americana. hurts. It still, still hurts. hurts. That's what we've been told. Brazil is longing for revenge. Yeah. The Brazilians who are in this stadium, by evidence of this yeah. second screen we were watching, I didn't see a single one watching the game. <laughs> None of the the They're off. kissing each other. Yeah, They're kissing. dancing. Yep. Even the Croatians got into it. Checked. The Croatians started dancing, doing little Budweiser moves. Budweiser product placement to show yeah. the camera. Not a single human being was watching that. And it was yeah. a very weird atmosphere because the game disintegrated. It mm -hmm. was played in the first half at a very high tempo, very yeah. difficult to sustain. And then in the second half, the players went through a period yeah. where... The notion of, and this was shocking for Brazil, uh, I mean, a team that do like to counter-attack and really didn't take the initiative, but even more shocking, arguably, yeah. for Croatia with that beautiful midfield. I mean, we, we, we fear and respect Rakitic. We yeah. adore that man. Luka Modric, why did you cut your hair? Yeah, really? I know. Really, you, that was this Samson moment. Are you that annoyed that Mick's Discaroo looks so beautiful <laughs> that you decided to just <laughs> yeah, mar your own beauty? But just itch after itch after itch in itches, that Brazilian midfield. Superb. The and the crowd lost interest. Yeah. They were playing a lot of angry birds by the look of things as yeah. that camera walked around. They were doing everything but watch football. And I think it's something to track, Davo, because we know this Brazil World Cup is a story of two clashing narratives. The return to the spiritual home, also Brazil, country on the edge, social protest conflagration. This was not the first narrative at all. This was a... They should give the World Cup to a proper country like Qatar or somewhere. They really <laughs> yeah. want to. Put, yeah. FIFA. Yep. Um, so, Rog, Funny period. 16 minutes in, I write into the second half, I've got nothing to say whatsoever about this game. You don't have to say things like that. Anyone that's watching the show, it's pretty evident. And then Bernard comes on in the 68th minute, Rog. He changes everything. 70th minute. <laughs> Ball comes into the box. Michael Ballack behind us as uh, as Fred goes down. He just says, present, present. Just like that. He's leaning back, kicking up a, a huge couch, and he just yeah. goes, present. Present. And he was absolutely right. The slow-mo replay can came on. Can we just on. say about, before we get to that penalty, that yeah. is going to be a storyline to watch. Big Phil, Felipe yeah. Scolari, juggling, not tactics, not kind of man manager ship, uh -huh. body shapes. Yeah. Body shapes. He realizes big bottom bigs. Yeah, Hulk, an enormous, enormous man, massive buttock span, enormous. Uh -huh. He realised that was not having the impact he wanted against the K uh, the canny Croatians. He activated, get me my small bottom small. <laughs> yeah, on trots Bernard, a man so little, I was afraid he was going to get lost in the grass. Then, yeah, Dave, it's thick. You said yeah. it was bobbly. It was very, very thick. Changed the game. The penalty, mm -hmm. Fred. He didn't dive. Americans watching the World Cup for the first time. Please. Oh, hard foul. Hard foul. Hard foul. Hard foul. He, hard. Feels... he was in pain. Fred is Portuguese for I feel gravity yeah. incredibly sensitively. Yeah, Niko Kovac should have been sent off for that yeah. challenge, frankly, Rog. All right, present. Penalty. Neymar pen present. Uh, Neymar uh, steps up. Funny little run. Jogs off to the side. Little stutter step. If you watch it, the goalie's doing exactly the same thing. Although I must say, Rog, you sort of feel like Pletikosa should have saved that one. He got got a hard hand to it it's almost he got two hands to it when he only should have got one hand to it because one hand he would have been harder and there you go and then at the end of the game oscar to louise 77th minute um louise doesn't make it but a few minutes later there we go another yeah. trundled in goal oscar, another trundled in goal they finally realized the way to break down croatia yeah which is just to hit it to either side of the goalkeeper trundle it he couldn't yeah, like a tree falling it doesn't in the move forest. well. Tree falling in the forest. We like that goal. I'm not going to deny it, did, didn't we, David? Oh, we loved How it. How much do we love it? Oh, we loved it in the face. We loved it in the face. Yeah. Because it proves, it proves America that the cupcakes that we are going to eat tonight, yeah. the Netherlands cupcake and the Spain oh, cupcake. Looking forward to it. We're not just biting into pastry, baked goods. Yeah. We're biting into science. We're biting into kind of prophetic, oracle-like uh, uh, baked goods. And that's what we're going to talk about. Netherlands and Spain, David. Yeah. Because the fun does not stop. That was not possibly the greatest game. Yeah. 
it was possibly not the result you wanted, America. Yeah. Um, but with Netherlands, Spain, you remember that game. That's okay. Like the prequel and the sequel, Dave, oh, to a little bit of kung fu fighting. Okay. We've got a couple of uh, tweets coming in at Men in Blazers. This is from uh, Derek DeVries. Turn your audio louder, please. We don't know how to use any of the equipment here, so sorry, we can't yeah. do that. Do you think we're like Howard Jones in concert? We don't <laughs> yeah, know what we any don't of know these what, knobs in here. We don't do. know what we're doing. From Jay Bishop at Men in Blazers. Has there ever been a more anticlimactic two goal debut from a prodigy with the nation's hopes pinned on his shoulders? Uh, was it anticlimactic, Rog? I don't think it was anticlimactic. What? I think that was a great opening World Cup game. That does it rank up there with Cameroon against uh, Argentina, no, 1990? Probably not. Does it rank up there with Senegal against France, 2002? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, but there wasn't a riot. Yeah. And that, in our books, makes it a great game yeah. thus far in Brazil, uh-huh. the Hunger Games. Uh-huh. And I think what we saw today was probably an incredible result in that locker room after the game for Brazil, uh-huh. where their worst fear. A goal leaked in rather disastrous fashion rather early in the game yeah. was endured. Uh, and they had the, the kind of ability to bounce back. And I, I, I prophesize, Dave, yeah. it's probably the best thing. You're not a cupcake. I just want to say, you're not a cupcake. <laughs> if, if arguably, it's probably going to sit them well for, go, for later in the tournament. They yeah. now know they are a team who, when things do not start as they need them to, when they do not control the game from the off, as they did mm-hmm. in every Confederations Cup game, yeah. when they ran at the opponents like Hungry Direwolves, yeah. they now know they have the, the endurance and the ability to keep their composure, turn the game around, and more than anything, it's affirmed Oscar, yeah. a player who has sl- sleepwalked through much of the Chelsea season, mm-hmm. and obviously for Neymar, massive, massive weight off. He can look himself in the mirror and say, I am the man, I am the man, I am the man that is going to deliver the God-destined trophy to this country, which has got to count for something. Uh, Roger, we're going to talk about Holland versus Spain in Please. a few seconds. But first of all, I want to take a few more of these tweets. I want to go through a few of them because it's amazing stuff. By the way, at GFOPs, I love what you send us. The, the stuff you write, it just kills me all the time. Um, the uh, After listening to Roger and Davo's Brazil-Croatia preview, this is from Sports in Breeze. It's safe to say they're better soothsayers than even an octopus. Thank you very much. It's not us, though. It is the copcake. Yeah, is we, the cupcakes. We, we would like to take. Um, we would like to take credit for that. Yeah, but. Morgan, uh, the Croatian keeper, was the man of the match for Brazil. If the referee wasn't the man of the match, uh, right? Frankly, um, and uh, Oscar was my man of the match. This is from Micah Piggott, narrowly edging out Neymar, own goal and dubious penalty. There you go. Own goal had a very good game, without a doubt. Uh, and Robin Hardigan wants to know, Rog, turn your mic up or are your cuffs drowning you out? <laughs> they probably are. But even in Rio, we're keeping things purely, purely suboptimal. Yeah. You want to listen to this. You don't want to listen to this so much, David. That's not true. Um, so what are we going to do? Uh, Holland, Spain. By the yeah. way, before, as you go, start oh, talking Holland, wait. Spain, I'm going, I'm going down under here. You are? Yeah. Okay, we're going down below. Oh, okay. This is going to be good. We're going to save the best for last. I okay. spent a lot of money on production for this show. Wait That's a minute, all I want I'm to just tell looking. you. You're going to see Have I got the minute. right thing around here? That's oh, yeah. beautiful. Just open there the box. We go. I mean, Spain against yeah. Holland tomorrow. We've got a team, Spain, uh, who are going to roll into town on the on the cusp of a remarkable feat back to back to back Euro World Cup Euro they now come and defend their championship uh, one more time to try and become the first team since 1962 to win back to back World Cups yeah. I mean this is Boston Celtics 1950-60 kind of dynastic claim by this Spanish team they uh-huh. come at a fascinating time the tiki taka the tiny paper cut passing with which they yeah. smother all comers denying the opponent's possession as if they took the ball and just stuffed it up their own jerseys and ran around the uh, ran around the field. That is under doubt as a strategy. Uh-huh. Uh, in Europe it is. Is Tiki Taka dead? But even within Spain, yeah. where their wonderful manager, and I love, I love Vicente. Del I Basque. love him. We're going to talk a lot about him yeah. uh, during the next couple of weeks. But he, he, he snapped at the Spanish media and he said, I am not a Tiki Taka Taliban. Yeah. By the way, when we... Start a band, Dave, which we oh, may do. It'd be an amazing band, oh, Tiki Taka Taliban. Tiki Taka, I'd buy that record. Talk to me about some of the key players who Where, you see for Spain. They have a very interesting dilemma. Do they go with what took them this far, or yeah. do they try and change things, have a focal point, have a striker, possibly oh. unleash the best Brazilian striker yeah. in the world? This man, Rog. Yeah. We're looking at, it's Diego Costa. Look at him right there. Will Diego. they unleash him? Will they unleash That's him Diego on Costa. their opponent so that their attack has a focal point? We will have to wait. Obviously, little hamstring end to the season for old Diego Costa. Oh, he's up. He's on the horse placenta, though. Oh, oh I'd love some horse placenta. on all over the horse placenta. That'd be placenta. so good. Yeah. I've been starting to use that as my aftershave. 
Um, he's been slapping on the horse placenta. Will he be yep. ready? Can he fit into this Spanish side, which has really been the end for many great centre forwards? Found uh-huh. it very difficult to fit in with his passing. Will yep. they go with Cesc Fabregas? Uh, we will see. And this Dutch team is very different to the Dutch team we last saw in America. If you watch the 2010 World Cup final, oh, it was like UFC. That, it was that UFC. Final. It was like kung fu fighting. I mean, they were the kind of team that would like carry around the pool cue onto the field, bring on the baseball bat, <laughs> bring on the knuckle <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Try and duff you up. Didn't get them where they wanted, which was I mean, to glory. They have Louis Van. Uh, Louis van Gaal. <laughs> yeah. um, and he has rejiggered this team. It's a team in transition. Yeah. We have two big names. We have Van Persie of Manchester United, the mm-hmm. fragile uh, and slightly erratic in the Dutch jersey centre forward. And we also have your favourite, Iron Robin. Oh, Iron Robin. Iron Robin. For those who haven't seen this before, I'm sure for our regular fans, this is an old bit. But Iron Robber has... It's a bit I, now. He has, he, it's, it's a bit. bit. It's, it's now a bit. bit cause you've done it so many times. I can't say it freshly. Except when I watch him, I get fascinated by it all over again. But it's a bit. I, Archen Robin. Ach. He has one move. Ach. It's like a basketball. Ach. He has one move. <laughs> and his one move involves his dodgy flapper. He has a funny little running style where he's running like that the yep. whole time. Yep. And he creates such movement with his dodgy it's flapper vo- as he's he running. He creates a vortex. He creates a vortex. The defenders look right into the eye Huge of the mistake. vortex, blinds Huge them. Mistake. Because they know, because they've seen scouting Everybody reports, knows. he always cuts where, Rog? Always cuts to the left. He always cuts inside. He cuts inside, Rog. And what everybody thinks, ah, oh, today is going to be the day. I looked into the eye of the vortex. He's going to go outside. He never does. Dodgy flapper, eye of the vortex. Like watching Stockton inside. and Malone. Stockton, or you know what they're going to do, but you cannot stop it. Yeah. Although I must say he's an insidious gentleman, a shame to all baldies across the world. <laughs> dodgy personality, that, as well as the dodgy flapper. Two big names do not make a team. And with this Dutch team, Van Gaal has a team in transition. A yeah. number of very young deeply inexperienced individuals yep. especially across that bat line where they're going uh-huh. to play five defenders yep. most of them are coming from the Dutch era Divisier where defending is actually illegal I believe see Josie <laughs> Elsador's 59 goal season you know um, so it's going to be a fascinating clash you've got this Dutch team looking to counter attack you've got them you. playing gentlemen across yeah. the back give me five Dutchies there's another give problem by the way guys. though Rog the Dutch team they're not eating enough vitamin E look at yeah. these guys they're in shocking physical condition yeah. they really need to get out in the Brazilian sun so they're going to play like this across the okay, back okay get it up hold it up there there you go That's the five Dutch in the back line. five in the back and then they're going to have another three in front of them they're going to try and counter tacker the tiki Spanish tiki tacker. Yeah, and the cha- the challenge is on the Spanish going to be able to slip little balls. It's going to be Iniesta. It's going to be Xavi one more Iniesta time. Iniesta and it's Xavi. Going to be that trout farm of glorious midfielders trying to slip little passes, and we will see. Costa we trying tell you to get what's behind them because we're going to save the cupcakes for the World so to, Cup preview, which will yeah. be up tonight, hopefully. Oh, it will be. Uh, yeah, give, on me, ESPN. Give, me, give me the Dutch back line. There All we I go. can say is I cannot wait for that clash, David. Yeah, no, it's going to be a, a really classic table in here. game. You know, out. it's amazing. Once again, FIFA. We would not suggest for a second that the World Cup is in any way fixed. No. But what are the chances? We are pro FIFA. What team FIFA? What are the chances of getting a replay of the 2010 World Cup final on the opening day of the 2014 World Cup final? Just the balls. It was a complete random lottery. He had the Dutch 2010, 2008 Euros, 2010 World Cup, Mm -hmm. 2012 Euros. If they win the 2014 World Cup, Rog. I think that there's a very good argument that they are the greatest team ever in international football. Yeah. In the modern era. Yeah, I would, and you can come back at us with Brazil in the in the 60s and the 70s. I believe the level of endurance, the speed of the game, this, mm-hmm. the, the depth, the depth of talent that there is across the world, the new world yeah. and the old, yeah. makes what they're trying to do, their achievement, their goals. Yeah. Their, I, I, I think that's one that we will keep debating through this World Cup. Yeah, the, the, the Dutch, uh, Rog... They're sort of the Colin Montgomery of world football. <laughs> they have uh, been some of the best in the world. Yep. Three World Cup finals. They haven't won a single and they're one. they're very good in the clubhouse. <laughs> very good. They're good very at the good bar. In the clubhouse. They're very good at the bar. We're going to be doing this after every big game. We will be live after the we Dutch game. We are going to decorate. <laughs> we are going to decorate bit by this. Bit. Send us stuff that we can put up. Because yes. the world hates a barren wall. Tweet us have at your Ravens. Blazers, at yeah. Rog Bennett, at Embassy Davis. Send your Ravens to the crap part of Rio. Uh, Ravens to the crap part of Rio. Um, send your uh, emails to meninblazers at gmail.com. Rog, we're on Instagram now. Yep. Men underscore in underscore blazers. I'm, like very ex- I'm, very, I'm very excited about the Instagram. That's a new thing for us. Uh, so this was 
Men in Blazers just on give ESPN us a, Just give FC. us a cuddle. We're, by the way, we're not in a studio. This is Bob Lee's <laughs> closet. He's got I a know. walk-in closet. We're in a tiny corner of it, oh. and we'll be back tomorrow. See you then.